Hello, welcome to this lesson in engineering mechanics. We're going to continue working with particle equilibrium, but now we're going to move from two dimensions to three dimensional problems. Uh, you see, we spent a great amount of time dealing with the two dimensional cases that we've done uh, previous to now. We've done lots and lots and lots of problems because the truth is, once you understand the concept of what you're doing with equi equilibrium, and working in two dimensions can build that experience in practice. Once you get that experience in practice, moving to three dimensions is just like a, a little additional step forward, uh, extending upon what we've learned in the past. So make sure you're comfortable with all of the 2D problems that we've done. Now we're just simply adding a third dimension. Now when we do equilibrium in three dimensions, um, the problems are necessarily going to get more complicated because we're basically increasing the amount of equations we have and the amount of things to keep track of. But fundamentally, the condition for equilibrium is exactly the same as it is for two-dimensional cases. Um, in other words, we look at the sum of the vector forces acting on the particle, or the center of mass of the object, um, and the sum of those forces have to be zero in order for equilibrium to be reached. So for, and I'll just say equilibrium, and this is exactly what we wrote before. The force acts this way, force acts this way, force acts this way. The weight might act down. We sum all of those forces together vectorially. That's why there's a vector bar on top of the F. And if the sum of those forces, including the weight, uh, sums to zero, then that means the object is motionless uh, or it's moving at a constant speed. It's not accelerating. But anyhow, it's, it's typically we talk about acceleration, so it's not, it's not moving. Now, if you remember back to the two-dimensional case, we said that the vector form was given by this, but we said that we sometimes can use the scalar form of these conditions. You know, and if you remember back from before, we said, I'll switch colors here, we said that the scalar form of this vector equation in two dimensions really just boils down to summing the forces in the x direction equal to zero, and we had to sum the forces in the y direction equal to zero. And now that there's a third dimension, you might guess that since there's three dimensions, we're going to sum the forces in the z direction. Uh, and they have to also be zero. So the extension from two dimensions to three dimensions is exactly uh, what you might expect. Notice there's no vector bars over here because now we're dealing with scalar quantities. So you, you still have to keep track of signs, you know, and we still use the same sign convention, uh, positive x that way, positive y up, uh, and so on. Or I guess in typically it's in a uh, three-dimensional system. We typically draw a three-dimensional system more like this. Um, so x, y, and z. So positive x is this way, positive y is this way, positive z is up. And if we go, for instance, this direction along x backwards, we'll have a negative component of a force as we're tracking things. So as we draw our free body diagrams, we're going to typically be drawing them in three dimensions. And so as you write things down, if you end up using the scalar form of these equations, you need to keep track of if your force is positive or negative, depending on your sign convention. It's the same as we've done in two dimensions, we're just extending it a little bit. Now this is the scalar form, um, but the full form of the vector form of this uh, condition, you'll see in books, I mean this really is the vector equation also, but if you want to break this up and maybe have, have a little more detail, um, it goes something like this. The sum of the forces in the x direction, we'll put an i hat vector, plus the sum of the forces in the y direction we'll put a j hat vector, plus the sum of the forces in the z direction, k hat vector, is equal to zero. You see, everything on the board here is saying exactly the same thing, they're just writing it a little bit differently. And I'm mostly writing this all down for you so that when you read your book, you're not really confused what they're trying to tell you. The master condition is that the sum of all the vectors acting on the point is zero. 